mysticism. I would like to begin this lecture with a little disclaimer that while the contents of this chapter might be less tangible than the other chapters, I would like to invite you to keep an open mind and try to view the content as tools that will help us understand and appreciate the art. When hearing of mysticism, those of us who might be somewhat familiar with Sufism and whirling dervishes of Konya might think this is an exclusively Islamic tradition that was introduced post-Islam. The topic of mysticism is one of mystery and intrigue to be sure, but it certainly is a pre-Islamic tradition. It offers a rather introspective view of faith and it is based on individuals striving for a first-hand spiritual experience. In the previous chapter, I am sure you have read about the positions of authority in Islam. And you should remember that I had listed mysticism as the inward approach to religion. The origins of mysticism are not really known. Some trace its roots back to the ancient tradition of Mithraism, a religion in ancient Persia. Some believe mysticism has been around as long as religion has, and that it has been seen as an alternative perspective sometimes challenging the established religion. One of the characteristics of mysticism in general is its exclusivity that allows only the initiated to be recognized and to participate in the rituals and events. Whatever the origin, there certainly exist many ancient concepts, traditions, and rituals that found a way to endure through the mystic ideas and rituals within Judaism, Christianity, as well as Islam. An example would be the subject of this painting, Moses and Aaron conjuring up a dragon, in which we see the story of Moses and the court of the Pharaoh. Moses was challenged by the court's magicians. He conjures up a dragon by throwing down his staff. Such a story certainly appears fantastic and impossible if we expect reason and logic to help explain it, because so many phenomena are left unexplained within any given religion the sense of mystery seems consistent with the concept of faith and mysticism and appears as an important part of this particular perspective in general. But it would be erroneous if we think the mystic movements are unified movements. What we are concerned with in this class, however, is neither to explain nor to romanticize this view. Our concern is to analyze mysticism as a way of looking at the world. Once we become familiar with it, we should be able to understand and decipher artworks and stories that are associated with it. This is why I have brought in the term mysticism as a methodology. A method, in this sense, is a construct, a series of symbols and explanations for explaining universal inquiries within all humans. Just as each people or religion has its version of the story of creation, for instance, mystic perspective offers its own view on it as well. The mystics understand the world through the profound meaning of its symbols. To a mystic, every single element or object stands for something beyond its mere material existence. Therefore, the language of symbols becomes a significant vehicle through which mystics can communicate the most intricate and intangible of ideas. The knowledge is often handed down from teacher to pupil, but it is understood as an intuitive knowledge that relies on being in spirit or inspired, contrasting to the academic knowledge. The belief is that the humans have come from God and the objective is to ultimately acquire first-hand knowledge of the divine so that they can find their way back to God. In Islamic mystic view, the story of Adam's descent on earth is seen as a turning point for all humans. Look at this painting from 17th century. 
The figure in the metal is Adam in heaven. The angels are shown bowing down to him. The second figure at the bottom of the page is also Adam after he has fallen on the earth. Artis has used the flame motif rendered in gold paint to demonstrate the brilliance of light filling the space. Note how Adam's two different garments represent his two different states. In the Quran, the creation of Adam is deemed as the highest achievement of God who by doing so wanted to create an example in humans highest potential. However, once on earth, Adam is no longer called that. Quran calls him Insan. When Insan becomes aware of his possibilities and potentials, he becomes a Bashar. The final stage is back to being Adam once this potential is achieved. As you will read, I hope you don't lose sight of the fact that this is one perspective one viewpoint through which th those who believe will pursue their spiritual goals and aspirations. Not all Muslims, however, agree on all of what I have just explained. This viewpoint has its own language and symbols, and since it has been instrumental and inspirational in the production of the arts, understanding it will help us understand the works of art that are created in response to the mystic concepts. In this perspective, it is no different than the biblical story of creation being the source of inspiration for Michelangelo. The panel of creation of Adam by Michelangelo in Sistine Chapel also depicts the story as Michelangelo understood and envisioned from the Bible. One of these examples is this painting of the prophet's mirage or ascension that is from the early part of the 16th century, but its subject is inspired by the great Andalusian sage and mystic Ibn Arabi. The story of the ascension of the Prophet is seen by Sufis as a significant example of experiencing God firsthand. While the ascension of the Prophet is mentioned in the Quran, the details Ibn Arabi talks about, such as the Prophet riding on a human-headed horse, are not part of the story and comes from his own artistic imagination. Ibn Arabi is one of the most influential figures who not only can directly be connected to works such as this one, but also credited for formulating many of the Sufi principles and philosophical ideas such as death, beauty, creation and perfection, as well as love and romance, which are all seen metaphorically as they relate to the Salik or pupil on the path of self-awareness. Ibn Arabi's writings are still widely read among the Sufis and those intrigued by mysticism in Islam today. There are other prominent figures that are also responsible for developing mystic theories mixed with theological knowledge such as Ghazali and of course Rumi who is seen as a pupil and follower of Ibn Arabi. Rumi's rhymed discourses or Mathnawi are one of the most celebrated works of a mystic that has been translated into English and has been one of the best sellers among the poetry books. Rumi is the founder of the whirling dervishes who to this day still hold Sufi ceremonial dances or sama in Konya, Turkey. In these dances, the salik or a pupil while holding the right hand face up and the left hand face down, perform the dance by swirling in their long and full white garments, echoing the revolving motions found in the universe. The mood that is created is meditative and trance-inducing that is meant to encourage getting closer to the state of receiving first-hand experience of the divine.